I was asked to make a podcast with audio of the muscles of the lower limb just so that you could listen to it when you were relaxing or whatever. Obviously, please be careful. Don't fall asleep if you're listening to this while you're driving. The first muscles we're going to talk about are the hip flexors. So these are at the front of the pelvis. We have two main hip flexors. We've got psoas major and iliacus or iliacus doesn't really matter how you pronounce it. Psoas major comes from the lumbar spine and all the associated bits of the lumbar spine, passes downwards under the inguinal ligament and joins to the lesser trochanter. That's joined onto by a muscle called iliacus, which comes from inside the iliac fossa, joins onto psoas. The two tendons together are called iliopsoas and then they both pass under the inguinal ligament to the less trochanter. So when they contract, they will lift the femur up, or if you're lying on a bed, they'll do a sit-up. They'll actually pull your lumbar spine up vertically. Other muscles that help to flex the hip are anything at the front, really. So sartorius is at the front of the hip, so it will help with hip flexion. That comes from the anterior superior iliac spine and rectus femoris as one of the quads the odd one out really that goes over the front of the hip as well that's got two heads it's got a straight head and a reflected head one of them comes from the AIIS and one comes from just above the acetabulum hip extension we have four muscles we have gluteus maximus which is quite a complex muscle gluteus maximus comes from the posterior so because it's at the back, it will extend the hip. It comes from the posterior sacrum, part of the ilium, the ligaments in between. The fibers pass downwards and laterally, and it splits into two different parts. 25% of it attaches to a roughened line on the back of the femur called the gluteal tuberosity. And the 75% that is left attaches to the iliotibial band. So because it's at the back, it will extend. Also, because it spirally wraps around the shaft of the femur, it will also help to laterally rotate the hip. If we take gluteus maximus off, we have three hamstrings, biceps femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus, and they all come from the ischial tuberosity. The hip abductors are gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and tensor fasciolata. And the way that I always remember these is the following poem. Tensor fasciolata, gluteus med and min, all abduct the femur and rotate it in. So they abduct the leg and because they are kind of angled anteriorly, they also internally rotate as well. The adductors of the hip are on the inside of the leg and the way to remember those is three ducks peck at the grass. You've got three muscles that have adductor in the title. You've got adductor longus, adductor brevis, and adductor magnus. Peck is pectineus, and grass is gracilis. So three ducts peck at the grass is adductor longus, adductor brevis, adductor magnus, pectineus, and gracilis. These all come from the medial aspect of the pelvis, from the pubis, the bone inside the groin, and they all pass downwards and attached to various parts of the middle of the shaft of the femur, all the way down to the knee in some cases. In fact, gracilis goes below the knee joint. There are also six deep lateral rotator muscles of the hip, which we don't actually teach you anymore. I'll tell you what they are. We have obturator internus, obturator externus, gemellus superior, gemellus inferior, quadratus femoris, not quadriceps, quadratus femoris, and piriformis. The only one of those that probably matters is piriformis. The reason being that piriformis lies very close to the sciatic nerve. And in some people who have slightly different anatomy, I think the sciatic nerve can get compressed by piriformis.
This podcast covers the muscles of the knee joint. The knee joint is a modified hinge joint, which means that we can flex, extend and rotate the knee. So there are muscles which do all of these movements. So we're going to start by talking about the muscles that actually extend the knee. The muscles that extend the knee are the quadriceps. Quadriceps means four heads and there are four main muscles three of them called vasti and one called rectus femoris. So imagine that you have three vast pints of lager and you get absolutely wrecked. And that's one way to remember it. Vastus medialis is the muscle on the inside of the knee. It's sometimes called vastus medialis obliquus because its fibers pull at a really strange angle, almost horizontally, to counteract the pull of the other three quads and stop the patella from dislocating laterally. Vastus medialis comes from the medial femoral shaft and they're so big that they actually come from around the back of the femoral shaft on a roughened line called the linear aspera. All of the quads end up in the same place. So I'm going to just give you one insertion point for all of the quadriceps, which is the tibial tuberosity. The way that they get there is slightly different. So they all insert into various parts of the patella. In the case of vastus medialis, it inserts to the medial border of the patella, and when it contracts, it will extend the knee. Vastus lateralis means big and on the outside, and as the name suggests, it's the lateral one of the quadriceps muscles. Again, that comes from the lateral shaft of the femur and the linear aspera, goes downwards and attaches to the lateral pole of the patella. Rectus femoris is the one on top and in between the two muscles and it's the odd one out because it goes over the hip joint at the front so it will flex the hip and it goes over the knee joint at the front so it will extend the knee so it's a two joint muscle. Rectus femoris has two heads. It's got a straight head and a reflected head which come from the AIIS and just above the acetabulum. It goes down the front of the thigh and inserts into the top of the patella and extends the knee. If you take off rectus femoris underneath, you've got another quad called vastus intermedialis or intermedius. And that comes from the middle anterior part of the upper shaft of the femur. Recently, there was another muscle discovered, which is called tensor vastus intermedius. Have a look and see if you can find out any information about that. If we take the quadriceps off, there is another tiny muscle called articularis genus, which is a very small muscle, which goes from the anterior shaft of the femur and it attaches to the synovium of the knee. And what we think its function is, is to actually retract or move the synovial membrane of the knee when we extend it. The synovium of the knee is very big with lots of folds and reflections and they can get trapped. So it's thought that articularis genus actually pulls the synovium out of the way. The muscles that flex the knee are the hamstrings, gastrocnemius and popliteus. So we'll start with the hamstrings first of all. You have three hamstrings. They all come from the ischial tuberosity. They pass down the back of the leg. One of them goes its own way down the lateral side of the leg and ends up at the head of the fibula. That's biceps femoris. Biceps means two heads. So biceps femoris has a long head and a short head. Because biceps goes behind the hip joint, it will extend the hip. Because it goes behind the knee, it will flex the knee. And because it goes laterally, when it contracts, 
it will pull the knee into lateral rotation. The other two hamstrings are kind of on top of each other. One of them is fat at the top and thin at the bottom, and one of them is the other way around, and they're called semimembranosus and semitendinosus. Again, they come from the ischial tuberosity. They pass down the medial aspect of the femoral shaft, cross over the back of the knee, and go to the medial part of the knee. So when they contract, they will again extend the hip, they will again flex the knee, and because they go to the medial aspect of the knee, they will internally rotate the knee. There is a part of the knee on the medial side of the shaft of the tibia called the pes anserine or pes anserinus, which means goose's foot in Latin, which is a bit strange, but it actually does look like a goose's foot because you have three tendons that join at the same place and stick out like the toes on a duck or a goose's foot. And the way to remember those is say grace before T, S, G, T. You have sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus. So have a quick look at the pes and serene. Another muscle which flexes the knee is gastrocnemius. Don't forget a muscle will only do what it can over the joint that it goes over. So because gastrocnemius goes over the back of the knee, it will flex the knee. It's got two heads. It's got a medial and a lateral head, and they come from just above the femoral condyles in the supracondylar area of the femur. And gastrocnemius is a two joint muscle. It goes over the back of the knee, so it will flex the knee and it ends up in the Achilles tendon, which goes behind the ankle, so that will plan to flex the ankle. There's another muscle in the calf called soleus, which doesn't go over the knee, so therefore soleus cannot do anything whatsoever to the knee joint. One of the more complex muscles in the knee is a muscle called popliteus. The word popliteal means the back of the knee. So the popliteal fossa is the space at the back of the knee. And there's a popliteal artery and a popliteal vein as well. Popliteus is a muscle which actually flexes the knee and causes rotation of the knee as well. And its attachments are quite complex. It comes from the lateral condyle of the femur and part of the meniscus, which is interesting because what we think it actually does when it contracts is pulls part of the meniscus out of the way and stops it from being squished or knit. It goes diagonally across the back of the tibia, it blends with the capsule of the knee, pierces the capsule to some extent and ends up 
attaching via a sesamoid to part of the tibia. And what it does is it flexes the knee because it's at the back. And it also rotates the tibia medially on the femur, which is the same as saying that it rotates the femur laterally on the tibia. It all depends whether the foot is fixed on the ground or not. And it's thought to be important in resisting rotation in the knee and also unlocking the knee from a position of full extension. It's worth mentioning that there are other muscles which have an effect on the knee. So interestingly, gluteus maximus, through its insertion into the iliotibial tract, can exert some stabilizing effect on the knee. Probably the same thing applies to tensor fascia lata. And sartorius and gracilis both cross the knee. And again, they may play a role in giving some stability to the knee joint. This podcast covers the muscles of the foot and the ankle. First of all, we're going to talk about the anterior tibial muscles. These are the muscles that dorsiflex and extend the toes. The first distinction to make is between an intrinsic and an extrinsic muscle. An extrinsic muscle starts in the leg and goes into the foot. An intrinsic muscle starts and ends in the foot. So the muscles that I'm going to concentrate on are the extrinsics. The first one is tibialis anterior, which as the name suggests is on the front of the tibia. It comes from the tibia, the area adjacent to the head of the fibula and the interosseous membrane, the membrane between the bones. Its muscle belly passes down, turns into a tendon and that tendon goes on the front of the ankle and it goes medially to the base of the first metatarsal and the medial cuneiform. It dorsiflexes and it inverts. Its main role is to act as a brake or a decelerator when the foot hits the ground and it lowers the foot down gently to the ground, a little bit like an aeroplane landing, back wheels first and then the front wheels coming down slowly. If we take off tibialis anterior, there are two more small muscles underneath. There's one that lifts the big toe up and one that lifts the other toes up. They come from the anterior part of the tibia and the fibula. Long thin muscle and tendons go down the front. They go in the case of extensor hallucis longus to the base of the big toe and in the case of extensor digitorum longus to the other four toes. Because they are at the front of the ankle they will dorsiflex and because they are on top of the foot they will extend the toes also. We now go to the lateral side of the leg and we have two main muscles called the perineae. We have perineus longus and perineus brevis. Perineus brevis comes from the area just below the head of the fibula. It passes downwards on the outside of the leg and it goes behind the malleolus, under the groove in the cuboid and under the sole of the foot and attaches to the base of the first metatarsal and the medial cuneiform. So when it contracts, because it goes behind the axis of the ankle joint, it will plantar flex and it also everts the foot. Perineus brevis is similar, but it comes from lower down and it goes to the base of the fifth metatarsal.
that bump that you felt in the first few weeks of term. And again, it's a plantar flexor and an everter. Think of them as the zip on a peronei boots. That's what the peronei do. There is also one called peroneus tertius, which is kind of an extensor tendon on the dorsum of the foot. Some people don't even have one of those, so I'm not worried about that, really. If we now go to the back of the leg, we have two main muscles in the calf. We have gastrocnemius and soleus. Gastrocnemius goes across the back of the knee joint, so it will flex the knee. It's got two heads, a medial and a lateral head, and they come from just above the femoral condyles. The muscle belly goes down, turns into a tendon, and inserts into the calcaneus, forming the Achilles tendon. So gastrocnemius flexes the knee and plantar flexes the foot. If you took gastrocnemius off, underneath that you'd have soleus. Soleus starts below the knee, so it can't do anything to the knee joint. It doesn't realize that there is such a thing as the knee joint. It starts on the soleal line and it comes from an arch shape attachment on the fibula and the tibia and the interosseous membrane. It comes down, joins to the tendon of gastroc and the two together form what's sometimes called the triceps sure or the triceps of the leg. And you've got these two muscles that form the Achilles tendon. If we take those off, there are a lot of deep muscles underneath, quite thin muscles. So in the same way that there was a tibialis anterior, there's a tibialis posterior, which is a long thin muscle that comes from between the tib and the fib, passes downwards, goes behind the medial malleolus and goes under and attaches to basically every bone it can find in the foot. So it's an inverter because it's on the inside and it will plantar flex as well. If we take those off, we have two more flexors. We have flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum longus. Not as concerned about these, but they come from the tibia and the fibula, pass downwards, go behind the sustentaculum tali, which is this scaffold of bone. And then flexor hallucis longus goes to the base of the big toe and flexor digitorum longus goes to the other four toes. If we go back to look at the dorsum of the foot or the top of the foot, above where the cuboid is, there's what looks like a greenish blue bruise. That's actually a muscle and it's a muscle called extensor digitorum brevis. If you pull your toes up, it goes hard. So it's not a bruise. It's actually a muscle. In the foot itself, there are 8 billion muscles in 5 billion different layers with 3 billion different names. When I was a student, we had to learn them all. I'm going to spare you that.